Well, there it is. One hell of a messy WordPress default dashboard. And if you present it to your customers, then you will have lots of questions. What is that the glance widget? That what is the status widget? And what is a quick draft widget? So there is no use for this one. Therefore, today we're going to build something like this. There are the shortcuts to the most used actions. For example, let's take a look at orders or edit products. Or let's add some tutorial videos for the customer. And at the bottom there is a contact form with the contact details for the user. It's going to take approximately 15 to 20 minutes to build something like that. Therefore, if you're interested, then jump in. Now, before we jump in, I have to tell you that we're not going to use any page builders or Gutenberg here. Just plain code snippets. If you're not used to CSS or HTML, then don't worry, I'm going to guide you through every step. So I'm pretty sure that if you want to implement this solution on your site, you're going to be fine. So I'm going to refresh. And there it is. Once again, our messy WordPress dashboard. Let's start customizing it. And therefore, you have two options. First option is that you're going to edit your child team's function's PHP file. And the other one is the one I prefer. That means we're going to go to the plugins, add new, and let's search for code snippets plugin. This one here. Install and activate it. And this one allows you to add custom functions to your site. And you don't have to worry that if you switch team that you're going to lose all the modifications. So install and activate. And now you see the snippets menu here. So click on add new. Now two options we have here. First option is that we can manually just uncheck all the widgets we don't want to see here. Or we can disable all them together. Therefore, click on snippets, add new, give it a title, for example, remove dashboard widgets. And now paste this code here. Take a look at the comments here. It says, what will it remove? Plugins right now, welcome panel, try Gutenberg, Gravity Form, and so on. It will remove the Elementor Overview widget, and it will remove the WooCommerce Dashboard Status widget. There is one more widget we're going to add there, and this one removes the site help from the dashboard. Select only run in administration area, save changes and activate. And now if I go to the dashboard, there is only one added by Fluent Forms and the other one added by WooCommerce. This one I'm going to disable manually. Next one, we need to make a one column dashboard. As you see, there is a four columns here, but we're going to create one column dashboard. Therefore, go to Snippets, Add New and paste this snippet here. Give it the title, for example, one column dashboard, only run in administration area, save changes and activate. Oh, one more thing. All the code snippets I'm going to show you today, you can find them in the description of this video. There is a link to my site where is the post with all the snippets. So, one column dashboard like this one here. Okay, let's create a dashboard now. Go to snippets, add new, and paste this code here. Give it the title, and now let's take a look what will it do. This snippet creates us a dashboard. I'm going to save it and activate it, but I'm going to run it only in administration area. Now let's take a look what happened. As you see, something already happens here. Some links, some videos, and so on. So let's take a look what is what. I commented everything for you. So this is row with heading. This one here, your main shortcuts and the text your main shortcuts and the text here. Next one, these are the columns. Every row here is a column. If you want to modify the column, just change this one here with a link. Don't delete the div classes here. Everything between these divs here, you can modify. For example, this link here opens up edit pages link. But if I want to open it up something else, for example, products, then I'm going to copy all products, paste the link here, remove this part, 
edit products for example save it and I'm good to go now pay attention that there is an icon here if I want to change the icon then change the class showed here and here because this class here adds the icon I'm gonna show you later how to change the icons here and if you want to add something then just copy and paste and paste and paste now I have three more columns next one we have another row video tutorials this one here and now we have another divs this one is a YouTube embed code and this one is a title here all together four videos so let's save it and let's customize it so it would look a bit better therefore let's gonna go and add new snippet and this time we're going to add styles give it the title add dashboard styles what will it do it will add a function that will add styles to the columns we created before let's activate it and then I'm gonna explain it a bit so only run in administration area save changes and activate refresh and there it is if you are wondering yes it is responsive I'm gonna open it up responsive view as you see works well now let's take a look at the snippet itself first thing I import a Google font called Ubuntu if you want any other font then go to Google fonts let's grab this Roboto here let's take uh, this regular select this style now click on add import and copy this line here now if I'm gonna replace this one then it will import Roboto but I can import both of them and customize it a bit later now there is one thing for you to change though take a look you have to change those commas here otherwise it will give you an error once again I comment I commented everything for you remove dashboard column border by default there is a border here I did not like it therefore I removed it this one is a divider divider is the one you see below the headings button background color and transition I don't have the contact form here I'm gonna show you how to add it a bit later but the button color is for contact form iframe margin bottom 1 em it's because I want those headings to be a bit lower next one we have a containers icon shortcut columns video columns if you want to change a column count for example I have a icon shortcut column four columns every one fr means a column so as you see I have four columns here if I want to be three column then I'm gonna just remove one of those here so update it refresh and now as you see three columns let's make it back to four one fr here so those are the columns for video containers shortcut containers or default containers here are the responsive ones once again take a look at the comments here if you want to add or remove columns just play with those values here this one here is a column background for video column and the regular column and now the icons I'm using the dash icon icons here take a look if I open it up there you go if you want to use this icon here then just choose it copy CSS take the content go to the snippet and replace this part here this is the add icon edit posts icon edit pages out icon you'll see what happens here so if you want to change icon replace this part let's add a roboto here 
Now take a look at the CSS rules here. It's font family Roboto sans serif. Just replace the font family you want here or there. And now I refresh the page and there is a Roboto font. If you don't believe me, then take a look. It's Roboto here and Roboto there. So you just replace these parts on the CSS code and you're good to go. At the moment, I'm going to change it back to the Ubuntu because I like it more. Well, <clears throat> and now there is only one thing to do. Let's add the contact form here. I'm going to open up the snippets and the create dashboard items. And I'm going to copy here a small snippet. So it's column with contact form, heading is contact us, there is a phone and email, and here goes the contact form short code. So I created a contact form with fluent forms, just copy it and paste it here. Now if you save it and go back to the home dashboard, there you go. Let's test it whether it works. Send it out. Thank you, it says. Now I'm going to open up mailbox and there it is. Now probably you wonder how does it affect your speed on the dashboard. Well, let's take a look. At the moment I have four videos which are streaming from YouTube. So I'm going to refresh and let's measure it up. So it took approximately 2.3 seconds and 117 requests. Now let's see what happens if I remove the videos here. So I'm going to remove all these parts here, save it, go to dashboard, refresh it. There is only shortcut cuts and contact form and now it loads with a one second. Now let's compare and deactivate those snippets here. We added one column dashboard and remove dashboard widgets. Now I'm going to go back to the dashboard. These are the default widgets. Let's measure it up. So it took two seconds. Let's test one more time. Now it's one second. So basically the custom dashboard without the YouTube videos loads as fast as the default dashboard. So if you're going to add your own dashboard, then don't overdo it with the videos. I'm going to put them back here. Four videos, refresh, and it's 2.5 seconds. So four videos from YouTube, they will add approximately one and a half seconds for you. So that's it for this time. If you find this tutorial helpful, then press thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and you will be the first to be notified about new tutorials. Now before you go, take a look at the next video you see on the screen right now because it's also full of useful content. Meanwhile, take care.